Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. In Anime Studio Pro 9, a new feature has been introduced entitled Smart Bones. Here, here we can go in and correct bone movements using the Actions panel as well as create movements with our objects using the bones as dials. So first, I'll discuss how we can correct our bones using actions. What we have on the screen here is a typical rectangle that you can create in Anime Studio. You'll notice when I click on the rectangle that it is made up of six points. So again, very basic. When I go to my bone layer and take the Manipulate Bones tool and I manipulate this, you can see that we have some distortion, especially when we get to about this point, the arm dramatically bends inward. And this has been an issue that has come up in the past with Anime Studio, and there are manual workarounds for it, and people have been working around it for years. However, the new actions allow us to fix this issue. So again, it distorts there, as well as when we bend it like this. So the first thing I want to point out is that if I take my Select Bones tool, you'll notice at the top that each bone is now automatically named. For instance, my first bone is named B1, and we have B2. This is important because in order to correct the bones, you need to reference your action by the bone name. You can rename your bones whatever you want, just keep the names consistent between bone and action. So with that said, let's bring up the actions window. I will create a new action. And I will name this action B2 because that is the bone that is giving me the most trouble. So I'll name it B2 since that's the name of the bone and click OK. Now we are automatically in that new action. And I will take my Manipulate Bones tool and starting right here, we'll just go up to about where this distortion really starts to take effect. So let's try right about here. You can see we created a keyframe for the bone action. So now what I'll do is snap over here to the vector layer. We are still on frame one of this action. I can fix the shape of the object when it's in this bone position. Now there is a limitation to this. You can only adjust points in the curvature of the object. So I'll take my Translate Points tool and come down here and we can adjust the arm like this. We can move the points around like this to attempt to correct the action. Now as I said, you can adjust the curvature as well. So I can take the curvature tool, come in here and just try to get this adjusted a bit like that. Okay, so now that we've corrected the vector layer, I can double click on main line to go back to my main timeline. And now select the bone layer, take the manipulate bones tool. And as you can see, as I bend up, we now don't have that distortion that was plaguing us before. If I move this down, you'll see it still doesn't when we move downward. However, we can create multiple actions to fix a bone. So for instance, I can go to new action. And this time I want to create a second action for the B2 bone. In order to do this, I'll name it B2 since that is the name of the bone, space two. Once you've done that, click OK. Now in the action, we'll bend the bone to where we have the issue, and then take the vector layer, grab our translate points tool, and adjust the points, as well as the curvature. Now I can snap back to my main line 
grab the manipulate bones tool while on the bone layer. And as you can see, the issue is no longer there. Finally, there are some more actions we can do as well. For instance, if I go to my vector layer on frame zero, and then go to my add point tool, and then add some points at the beginning here of the top of the rectangle, and then go back into the first action I did, so B2. Now, when we bend the arm, we could, for instance, take the translate points tool and create a bulge here if we wanted to, for instance, have a character flex. So something like this. So now, if we go back here to our main line and then grab the bone layer as well as the manipulate bones tool, you can see as we animate this up, the muscle bulges up. And this is just a very basic example of that. Obviously, I'm just working with a basic rectangle. As you create more complex characters, you'll be able to do more complex things with the Smart Bones actions. So now, let's take a look at the second feature for the Smart Bones actions. With this example of Smart Bones, I can control my eyes with bones. In other words, I can use the bones as dials. So if I take my Manipulate Bones tool while I'm on the dials layer, you can see that I can create a blinking effect. I can dilate the eyes. I can move the eyes sideways and up and down. Now the thing is, you can combine all these actions. So I could dilate my eyes a little bit while they are moving sideways and looking down. At the same time, maybe my character is going to start to blink. So as you can see, we have dynamic control over the actions using our bones. This method has been used in the past using scripts and other methods in Anime Studio, but now creating dials is a built-in feature into Anime Studio Pro 9, and it's actually pretty easy to do. And if you're familiar with actions, you should be up and running in no time. So first, what you need to do is create a bone layer and then draw out some bones for your dials. In this case, I have created four dials. You can then apply restrictions to those dials so that they can only go so far. After that, you're going to want to name each bone. In this case, if I take my Select Bone tool and click on the blink, you can see at the top I have named it blink. Same with dilation, it's named dilation, sideways, up, down, and so on. I also created notes for our reference. That's not as important. That's just for you to understand what's going on here. Next, you're going to create actions for each of those names. As you can see in my actions panel, I have a blink, dilation, up, down, and sideways action. So now, when I go into blink, to double click, what I did here was, on the bone layer, I adjusted it so that my blink dial was turned all the way to the right, and then I went into my lids layer and adjusted the layer from frame zero to frame one. This is what it looks like on frame one. This is what it looks like on frame zero. So then when the blink is positioned at its start, we have this, and as we turn it, it tweens the animation until the end when it looks like this. The same is applied for all of the actions. If I double click on dilation, and go to my bones layer. You can see that I have the dilation dial turned this way. If I go to my pupils, you can see I have enlarged them on frame one. And this again applies for all actions. So up and down, I crank the dial to the right. I simply move my eye color and pupils down and sideways, I do a sideways motion with the dial turned to the right. And that's all there really is to it. The important thing is you make sure that you name your bones the same as your actions. And that when you go into those actions on the first frame, you adjust the dial to the opposite of its starting position. And then you create the effect on frame one that you want to have take place 
when you put your dial in the finished position. Everything else in between will take care of itself. And this is just a very basic example. I'm sure as you play with it, you're going to come up with some very creative effects using this new feature. Anyway, that wraps up this lesson on smart bones. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so be sure to check those out, and I'll see you next time.